Hello, my name is John Breen and welcome to this tutorial on sharpening. Sharpening is essential maintenance for your dental instruments and no dental kit is complete without a sharpening stone for that reason. The techniques are simple and only require minor tweaks depending on the instrument you intend to sharpen. So why do we sharpen? Every time an instrument is used, minute particles of metal are worn away from its tip, making it dull and ineffective over time. The aim of sharpening is to restore the sharp cutting edge of the blade, which by proxy will preserve the original shape of the instrument. Each instrument is designed a certain way for a reason, and altering this shape can impact how the instrument does its job. A blunt instrument can also cause clinician fatigue as they work harder to remove deposits within the mouth. A sharp edge will cleanly slip under the deposit to lift it from the tooth, something a blunt edge is too rounded to do. Finally, Instruments that are cared for and maintained properly work as they should. Blunt instruments can cause tooth damage and prolong surgeries, compromising the level of care we are promising our customers. So we know why we should sharpen, but how do we know when we should do it? That depends on a couple of things. How often are you using your instruments? Is it weekly, daily, multiple times a day? The blade is worn every time it is used, so the more frequently you use an instrument, the more often you will need to sharpen it. How difficult was the surgery? Patients with tartar buildup will require more attention than others. One surgery could blunt your instrument more than two or three other surgeries on patients with less deposits. Do you find scaling becoming increasingly more difficult or taking longer? You will feel the difference a sharp instrument makes when compared to a blunt one. All these factors mean there's no set answer on when to sharpen, but a good rule of thumb is to lightly sharpen after every procedure. This is good practice, and it means that you will never be in a situation where you have an anaesthetized patient in front of you with an unsharp instrument. For those of you just beginning, a quick way to test the sharpness of your instruments is to use it as you would on a tooth, but on a plastic rod like a toothbrush handle. You should feel the blade catch as you move it up and down. A blunt blade will effortlessly slide up and down in comparison. If maintaining your instruments is important, so is maintaining the equipment you use to do it. Sharpening is done with a specially shaped and textured stone. To keep it working well, it is good practice to wipe it down after use to remove debris. Likewise, it is good practice to alternate the areas where you are sharpening, to prevent grooves and uneven surfaces developing which would sharpen instruments incorrectly. A lot of people ask if they need to use oil while they sharpen. And while it is not completely necessary, it does have its benefits. Using oil helps to trap all the residue after you sharpen. It also lubricates the stone to avoid surface friction and leaves a nice surface finish on the blade. Once you have successfully sharpened your instruments, you need to keep them sharp until it is time to use them. This is ideally done by using cassettes to store them. Loosely storing your instruments in a box or a drawer means they can roll around and bump off one another, blunting them in the process. A cassette neatly stores them, preserving their sharpness for surgery and also making it easier to autoclave them as a set. Rubber caps to place over the tip during autoclaving do exist, however, they can do their own work at blunting the instrument as they are pulled on and off, similar to putting a needle through a rubber cap of a medicine bottle. It is a minuscule difference, but it does make a difference. We are going to start by looking at how we sharpen our hand scalers and our hand curettes. But before we begin, there is a very important landmark you need to locate on each instrument first. The terminal end is the shaft that extends from the end of the blade face to the first bend in the instrument. It varies for each instrument, but the same principle applies. You can see on screen we have our universal curette on the left, our Gracie curette in the middle, and our universal scaler on the right. The terminal end is a shaft located between each of the arrow points. First up is the universal scaler, and this is made up of three 90 degree angles that form a pointed triangular tip. It's used for super gingival scaling. Next we have the universal curette, which has a single 90 degree face and a curved toe tip. The rounded tip makes it an ideal instrument to scale sub gingivally without piercing the gum or causing damage. Lastly, we have our Gracie curette, which also has a rounded toe tip for sub gingival scaling. 
The difference with this curette is that its blade faces are angled at 70 degrees and each faces the opposite direction to the other. It's an excellent tool to scale when the 90 degree face of the universal curette isn't angled enough for the cutting edge to achieve contact with the tooth or deposit because of its shape and curvature. Because each instrument has different angled blades, they need to be sharpened accordingly, and that is where the IM Tree Sharpening Guide can help. This chart has been developed with an easy colour coded system to help you angle your stone correctly against the relevant blade face. It can be conveniently folded around the table for quick access when sharpening after each procedure. To use, the tip is placed at the point on the chart where all lines meet. You then line the terminal end of your instrument parallel to the axis. The sharpening stone is then positioned at an angle based on the colour system. Yellow and red for universal scalers and curettes, and grey for Gracie curettes. When your instrument is in position, take a sharpening stone and place it at the respective angle. In this case, I am working with a universal scaler, so I will use the red and yellow marked zone. Move your stone in an up and down motion, starting at the back of the blade and working your way towards the tip. This sharpens the entire blade face evenly. As for the universal scaler, the universal curette has a 90 degree face, so it is sharpened by using the red and yellow marked zone also. For Gracie curettes, we'll use the same technique as before. However, we will angle the stone towards the grey marked area, which will comply with the 70 degree angle of its blade faces. For all three instruments, we will need to sharpen each of the blade faces on both ends on both sides. On a Gracie curette, this is only one side per end. Next on our list of hand instruments are elevators and luxators both of which play their own very important part in tooth extraction. First up are luxators, which are used to cut the periodontal ligament and therefore always used before an elevator. Elevators are used after the periodontal ligament has been successfully cut to elevate the tooth out of the alveolar bone. They come in two forms, usually winged elevators or straight elevators. They both do the same job, however, it does depend on user's preference. IM Tree's Ergo range of elevators and luxators should be sharpened by using the smiley face technique, while the stainless steel variety are sharpened at 45 degrees. When working with winged elevators, the edges also need to be sharpened, and this is done with a conical stone. One important thing to note is when you're working with elevators is that they should not be used like a shovel. Using elevators like this applies a tremendous amount of pressure on both the jaw and the tooth and this can damage the tooth and also the surrounding structures. Luxators are used by inserting straight down and pulling straight back up. They have a flat, sharp blade that cuts the periodontal ligament as they do so. You should do this around each face of the tooth. To elevate, the elevator is inserted straight down. A twisting pressure is then applied to the left for approximately 10 seconds before returning to a relaxed position and applying the pressure again to the right hand side. It is then returned to its middle position and pulled straight up. You do this on each face of the tooth also. To sharpen the ergo range of elevators and luxators, draw a smiley face on the sharpening stone with MD30 handpiece oil. You sharpen the beveled end of the instrument at the back of the blade. Angle the instrument at 45 degrees and follow the curvature of the smiley face, evenly sharpening the entire blade edge. For winged elevators, work the conical stone between the wings in an upwards motion. This is a tapered sharpening stone to cater for all size elevator tips. The stainless steel variety of elevators and luxators are sharpened using a stroke technique. Hold the sharpening stone vertical and angle the inside of the blade at 45 degrees. Move the sharpening stone upwards against the blade in one motion, approximately two to three strokes after each use. 
Finally, we have the periosteal elevator that is used to lift gingival flaps. This is sharpened using the smiley face technique as for the ergo range. If you need any further information, don't hesitate to contact us via the details on screen or through your local IM3 representative. All ordering codes for the products mentioned can be found on our website or on our digital catalogue at www.imtreevet.eu forward slash catalogue.